Everybody stand, please. Welcome, Brother J.R. Nelson, the pastor. Serve a good God, church. Amen. Name's Jesus. We need a spirit filled preacher to teach us right from wrong. Yes. We need our old fashioned seekers who pray all night long. We need some good gospel singers to help us go another mile. And the church will triumph. It'll be worth it after all, child. It'll be worth it after all. After all of these trials, we're going to hear Jesus call. It'll be worth it after all, child. It'll be worth it after all. After all of this climbing, it'll be worth it after all. Now when you're down in the valley, prayer is all I can do. But the Lord sends deliverance, He'll strengthen you. Now when you're up on that mountain, you see me struggling alone. Just lift my name up to Jesus, let's help each other make it home. It'll be worth it after all, child. It'll be worth it after all. After all of these trials, gonna hear King Jesus call. It'll be worth it after all, child. It'll be worth it after all. After all of this climbing, it'll be worth it after all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's a good God, ain't he? Give the Lord a hand clap. He's everything we need. He's everything we need. Praise the Lord. Uh, Matthew 5 and 8. Matthew 5 and 8. Like this, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Let's all bow our heads. Pray. Your most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, Lord, for your holy God. So we ask you, Lord, that you just come, Lord, and you just have your way this evening, God, Lord, in this. We love you, Jesus, Lord. We ask, Lord, for your heart this evening. We ask, Lord, for your words, Lord, what you want spoken, God. Lord, I'm nothing, Lord, just merely a man, Lord. Without you, Lord, I'm not anything. Lord, touch his congregation, Lord, and touch his ears, Lord, to see that we can hear, Lord, what saith the Spirit to the church. Bless our eyes, Lord, that we can see, Jesus. Lord, we love you and we praise you, Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Lord, most of all for what you've done on the cross of Calvary, Lord, to make this life, Lord, we can have a life, life and more abundant, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for it all. We ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ and that. And amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank Him for His love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Yes. That ought to be the first thing in our life that we thank God for because it's it's the greatest thing that we could ever receive on this side, Brother Wayne. It is a true love and a true joy and a true peace. You can't be the peace that passes all understanding. That means nobody can understand why you're so happy. They can't understand why you're peaceful in times of calamity, in times of things that's going wrong. It's it's a peace that surpasses all understanding. I mean, you won't be able to understand where it comes from. Right. For this old merely mind we have, Brother Wayne, but we're just glad to be happy this evening, ain't you? Right. Glad to be happy. Glad to have a God that lives inside of us that'll make us happy, that'll, that he can give us a greater vision than just a car, a greater vision than just a fine house, right. a greater vision than just a, just a person that's in our life. People's going to come in your life. People's going to leave out your life. Right. You can't base your life upon people. you got to base it upon the Word of God. 
God and upon God. Amen. But the Bible says there, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I've been thinking about the heart. And I know the, the, when the Roger was in the hospital down there last, I know the Lord put it on my heart to go talk to him about his heart. And we got to have a pure heart, church, and it's hour that we're living in we're coming close down to the time and we've got to start inspecting some things and looking yeah. at some things in our life and and really getting down to the nitty-gritty brother wayne you know when the these people they're out here and they build these houses and when they come to the end of the job they they want to make sure that all the check marks is on that little list that they've had to do brother wayne and we need to go through our life and through our heart and make sure everything's that everything's checkmark, kids. That everything that you that's in your life that needs to be for God, and that nothing's left out. That you ain't crossed nothing out and forgot about it. We need to come before God with a pure heart, knowing that He loves us, Brother Wayne. And we need to check things out because when we stand before Him, Wayne, I believe God's a man of the heart. You know, I know, I know. We we do this and we dress right and we speak right. We do these things, Brother Wayne, because we're His children. I don't do it trying to get to heaven. I do it because I'm going to heaven. Amen. I don't do right. it just for I don't want to just be seen doing it. I want people to know that there's been a change in somebody's life when, when they do this thing, right. Brother Wayne. And you know our hearts even gotta be right in that. Amen. Our hearts even gotta be right in the things we do for God. Amen. Really does, not out of just selfish intentions or for somebody just to think we're righteous and holy. But Lord, it's that He knows the heart. That's what, that ought to scare us to see that right. He knows the heart, that He's looking into our hearts and that He knows every thought that goes through our hearts and that He can take and He can recite them to us. Sister Pam, because Jesus said when he walked among them, the Sadducees and the Pharisees would be saying things in their hearts and he'd ask them the why they say this or, or he'd repeat yeah. it or he would rebuke it or he'd say something about what was going in their hearts, Brother Wayne, and they wasn't even saying a word, but he knowed and he felt and he, he had that discerning that even, and know that he could hear them. I believe he could hear the voice inside their mind of saying those things, yeah. Brother Wayne. He really yeah. could, but yeah. God's a man of the heart and then just like it said there, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And the Bible also says, Matthew 6, 21, it says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. See, we got to watch for the things that we build. He told us not to lay up treasures here on earth, but lay them up in heaven where neither the rust nor moth or the thieves or no one can break in and steal. Brother Wayne, it's, it's where our heart is. It's, praise be to God. It's where, listen, that's where we are. That's where our heart is today. And, you know, I know we call this the mind and, and the heart. And when God... When it speaks of the heart in the Bible, I believe there's somewhere real, real deep inside of this thing right here. That is the heart. I believe it's real, real. I believe it's the core and it's the it's the foundation that's in your mind. I believe when we things because when you settle things in your heart, see, we get things settled in our heart, Brother Wayne, and you can't move off of. You don't move. People, it's hard to bury when they get something settled in their heart. It's, it's hard to bury it off of. Them. That's why they say I've been this way for forty years, and you ain't gonna change me now, Brother Wayne. It's been settled. It's settled in their heart. But I thank God. I thank Him for a spirit that can shake and break loose. Of foundation that's not worthy to have a roof on it that's not worthy to hold the siding or the name of Jesus today but he broke loose my foundation that I had built and he said you've got to lay my foundation which is built upon the prophets and the apostles and Jesus Christ the chief cornerstone and give me a word that I can rely on and give me a spirit that I can build with and get, you know that spirit's your tool on building your house today that spirit is your tool on everything that you do in your life today and it's the heart that Jesus Jesus deals with to get this to get this right here to do what the Bible tells it to do and for him to us for walking the way that he wants us to walk in righteousness and, and in pure holiness you know it's, it's the inner core of the heart today I was thinking about the heart and how deep it must be how deep it goes for us to have a place in there that only God can see and that he can dwell with you know the devil can't get in your heart he can't do it the devil ain't got no place in your heart. You know what the devil just does? He just lays things out there. That's all he does. Can he figure us out a little? Yeah, if we go in a pattern, and if we keep patterning things, yeah, the devil, and if we can all figure, we can pattern. We pattern deer all the time to kill them. What do you think the devil's doing? He can patter you, pattern you. And he can get a click on what you're doing and what you like and what you don't like. But he can't. Get in your heart today. Only God can get in your heart today and do it. But if we allow the things, if we allow what He lays out there to come in our heart and start pushing God out and the things that God wants us to do, then the devil, he can start beginning triumph in our life and not to listen by this right here. And when the devil gets in people's hearts, Brother Wayne, 
Look what they're doing today. Look what world we're living in today when he gets in the heart. He said, blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God. It's going to take a pure heart, church, to see God. It's going to take a child like mine, I believe. I look at the children and then babies. It's going to take a child like mine to, to see God. It really, not saying be dumb, not saying do ignorant things, but it's going to take a mind that's saying this is all I have. This is all I need. This is who's taking care of me. This is the way that I got to go. This is the way that I need to be. It's going to take a child like mine. A child only knows their parents. They should only. They should only know their parents in the way that their parents should go. And you know what? It goes just like when he said it. Listen, he said, my voice still follow. But he said, a stranger, they will not. My children should only hear daddy's voice. Amen. They should. They only should hear daddy's voice. When the, listen, when the one comes along, the hireling or whoever it is comes along or, or some other father-like figure comes along and starts telling them the wrong things, they shouldn't obey by those wrong things. They should only hear the father's voice. Even when they're done, listen, that is, now is that we're teaching our kids right around here. I believe we're teaching our kids right in the things that they should do. And as our voice echoes in the their mind they got a choice whether to do the right thing or the wrong thing and as God's voice echoes in our mind we have a choice he did give us free will brother Wayne and I believe that's why God loves this way so much he said I give them a free will I give them a choice of life or death they chose life and they chose to walk in this life so I'm going to give them life and give it to them more abundantly if we're walking this life and keep our heart right with God brother Wayne we can have a power over the devil we can have a power over the flesh that we don't do the things that it wants to do that we can take the devil and put him under our feet just first thing in the morning we don't have to fight with him till noon we don't have to fight with him till dark we can put him under our feet right, right there first thing in the morning and take care of this thing that's being done today we need a pure heart church we've got to keep a pure heart Matthew 12 and 33 it says either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Ain't that so simple? Lord God, it's simple. The tree's known by his fruit. It says, O generation of vipers, how can you be an evil? Speak good things, for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of, his, of the heart bringeth forth good things. And the evil man bringeth forth evil treasure, bringeth that the, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Listen, we gotta watch everything. We gotta be peculiar people, Wayne. Amen. They think we're foolish because we speak a little slower. I want to speak slower. I want to slow down. I want to speak slower. Quit answering so quick. Quit moving so quick sometimes on things. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Wayne, because it, sometimes it just ain't God. Right. You know, sometimes it just ain't God. Our flesh can get us in a hurry and get us a, going on things, but I just I want, I want God to be. I want the mind of Christ. I've been praying I want the mind of God. I want the mind of God for everything, for everybody. Today I was thinking, or today I'm, I'm, over, I, I'm over a lot of stuff. I said I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a neighbor, I'm an employee, Brother Wayne, I'm a pastor, I'm a shepherd, I'm, every, I'm all this. And right. if you ever took collection in your life, what you are. Amen. If you ever looked and really said, now, here's what I am, say it to yourself sometime. Inventory. Here's what I am. I'm all this, and I've got to be all this. It is, and you, but don't bombard your mind with it. God can let you be all that. He really can. He really can do it, but we've got to be led by His Spirit and able to do these things because He gave us by His Word what we need to be and how we need to be. He gave it to me how to be that husband, how to be that neighbor, that friend, that employee, that, that pastor. He gave me all this ability that I can do these things. Wayne, what time I'm here in this earth? I don't think He'd set me out for something He couldn't finish me through to you. That's right. I believe He'll hold us up, church, yeah, and hold us in the time of trouble and need. Yep. But listen, it's out of the good. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak us. Amen. When you take it and you're hearing people talk and we're talking ourselves, what's mostly coming out of our hearts? Is it about that car? Is it about the house? Right. What's it about? Is it about Jesus? 
is it about, I ain't saying you have to all the time, I know we got to talk about some things. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm talking about, when it's, what about these idle words? Right. What about them? If I'm going to idle, I want to idle in Jesus' name. Don't you? I do. I want to be idling in Him. Uh -huh. And I want to have yeah. a conversation about Jesus yeah. when times get quiet and I'm around somebody. Instead of mentioning somebody's name and knowing that they're going to talk about them because I mentioned their name, I want that yeah. to stop. Yeah. I want it to be about Jesus. It's true, brother. Way we yeah. get sometimes amongst yeah. people, and if we, we know if we've mentioned certain things, we'll get somebody to say something. Yeah, hey, you do. You'll throw a little wood on it far, buddy, oh. and you'll let it burn a little. Well, yeah. then it got sometimes I've did that before, and it goes so far. Man, I wish I'd never started this far. And then what are you doing? You're praying for a week, mm -hmm. repenting, and you're apologizing, you're doing things, just wishing that you never even said those three words. I, sometimes all it takes is three words. Right. Sometimes one to get some people. Started. Yeah. It's true. We gotta watch, brother Wayne. And, and you know, I, I said this a here a while back. You know, most of the time our conversations, if it ain't about somebody, we're pretty quiet people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. the truth. That's the truth. We're pretty quiet people. Ain't got much to say, brother Wayne, because it ain't about somebody or, or something. And I just want to be. We need a clean heart. Yes. We need yes. a clean heart. Yes. Whether it's about our brothers and sisters in Christ or our brothers and sisters in the flesh or whether it's our neighbors in Christ or our neighbors in the flesh. It's the truth today. I love the Lord. He's a good God, but we've got to keep a clean heart. Right. We've got to keep a clean heart toward people. I believe God teaches us this in the Word to keep a clean heart. This and it says, I wrote down, understanding must be in the heart. Understanding's got to be in the heart. Not just in sight. Because sometimes we can't understand what we see and what's going on. Mm -hmm. I don't know why my buddy's laying over there dying and hurting. I don't know why he's shaking. I was watching him last night over there laying with him in the bed and talking to him. But he just his body just take off. You know, I don't I just Lord, I gotta trust you. I gotta keep telling myself I trust you, Lord. Whatever's going on here, whatever's going on, I'm seeing God. I gotta trust you. Amen. You know, and you see people crying around, and you, you just, you, you ain't selling your mind on some things and this and that. But you gotta trust the Lord and and keep going on. I don't understand it all, but understanding must be in the heart because the things we see, brother Wayne, don't always make sense. It really right. don't. But no, we gotta understand and know that God's got it. That he's got it and he's in control of it, Sister Pam. We, yeah. That's how we can we can keep a pure heart by just trusting him and not yeah. taking off and depending on our own thoughts and yeah. our own. He said, "Lean not to your own understanding, right. but we must lean unto God, yeah. Brother Wayne, and knowing that he's that he can give this, that he's he's the one over all this. Yeah. We've got to keep it today, but don't just depend on your sight today." Listen, we're living in a land of amongst the people that the Bible will read right here. It says, "For this people." Heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Lots of things, lots of people's minds. Yeah. Lots of people's bodies, lots of people's sicknesses, just because they won't let their heart be pure by the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. I believe some people can keep some sicknesses off of them by, by just obeying the Word of God. Amen. I'm true. I'm serious. I know Amen. some things is, it, we can call it life or we can call it just going to be there. But boys, I'm telling you, I still got a God that can keep me like He did Moses. Amen. I can't forget about that. I can't Amen. forget about I got a God that their shoes didn't wear out. That's that right. they walked 40 years in the Lord. wilderness. I got a God that their coats was all right, Brother Wayne. I got a God that's able just to heal, reach down and touch yes. and, and to keep kept them to yes. pay me to keep us. I got a God that when Goshen was in the dark, that there was a light in their house. I got a God that when all death was going through the land, there was blood over their door. I've got a God that was still able, and He's still able today. He's a God that when they stood before the sea, He rolled it back, and He let them walk across on dry ground. We still got that same God today, church, that we can depend on. All hell's coming loose upon the United States of America. But we're the people of God that's standing true at that and say, God, you're going to roll it back. I see waves, Lord, but I'm going to see dry ground. I'm real glory. I see nothing. Lord God, I don't see no food, but here comes the cotton out of heaven. Lord, I don't see these things the way I do, but God, 
somehow. Thank you, Jesus. Elijah laid by that brook. Elijah laid by that brook and that raven brought him, brought him what he needed. Amen. That raven every day flew, flew by the hand of God. It went to the place of food, delivered the place where the food needed. We've got a God with a hand that can guide the birds, that can guide them. I tell you, we've got a God that can take the king of the jungle and bring us his food for that day. We've got a God that's able today, that has all power both in heaven and earth. He's got it all, church. We've got to keep a pure heart to see this. We do. Your pure heart's your vision. There's things, there's roots, there's roots to things. And when we got it, when we're messing with it, when we're messing with our heart, our vision goes blind. Our hearing goes dull when we're messing with our heart, when we're putting things in our shouldn't, and letting doubt creep in and fear. And we got to keep it pure, Brother Wayne. I want to have the right vision. I want to have the right sight. I want to have the right hearing. I don't want just anything. I want God's sight. I want God's hearing. I want the mind of Christ. I want the mind of God. I don't want it just to be anything else. I don't want to settle for it, Brother Wayne. I know we serve a God. And I know, listen, it seems like we're not seeing much happen in the church. It don't seem like. But Lord, I believe there's coming. I still believe there's coming a day. Keep praying. Keep seeking. I believe at the time when the miracles are supposed to be that there are going to be more. That we are going to do those exploits that they preach about. That His people is going to do these things, Brother Wayne. And I believe it's going to win people. I believe it's going to win people. All the preachers are talking about an end time revival. Whatever they want to call it, I don't know. But I just know that there's going to be a time coming that it's going to be used and we need to stay prayed up because I want to be used in that time, Brother Wayne. I want to be a tool that He can reach down and use. I just don't want to look around and see everybody else doing it and everybody else going, I want to go with God. I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to miss these miracles. I don't want to miss anything that God's got for us today. We've got to keep a pure heart. We've got to have a pure heart. Listen. He said, Matthew 15 and 8, He said, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Wayne, the pews is full of them today. They just give God mouth service. And they go outside and they don't care for their family. I've been, I got a recording of Brother Wes on my phone. It reminds me from time to time, if you don't go out to your family, you don't get out to your friends, they're going to die destitute and lost without God. He says that over and over to me, Brother Wayne. Right. Yeah. They're going to die lost and destitute without God. Yeah. They ain't going to have it if we don't do it, Brother Wayne, and give it to them the way it should be. I know we, you know, there's, there's things and there's ways we need to present God, but it's coming down. It's coming down to a time you can only be rude sometimes. Yeah. It's true mm-hmm. to even get a word to them, to even tell them anything. You've got to shake their heart. Yes. I mean, some people, I, my heart gets shaken when I get mad. Yeah. I think a lot when I get mad. Yes. I do, I think a lot when I get mad. Yes. And I, I do, I don't, you know, I, but we got some people just, they, they run off of something different than we do. They just, they, they, they want to fight. Right. You know what I mean? But if we get people to think, get them to thinking first right. before they get, before the spirit takes over in them, buddy, right. it, it'll speak to their hearts today, Brother Wayne. We can get this today if we just take and keep a pure heart. Listen, he says, but those, these, those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. You understand that? You want to defile your, your body. You want it to be defiled before God. Let this heart be wrong. Let this heart speak things that it shouldn't, Brother Wayne. Right. It's truth. We, we speak things sometimes. And I guess the, the worst thing I've ever heard is, I don't mean to say it this way, don't say it. Yeah. Don't say it. I don't like it. I know just as soon as somebody says that that it's just going to be wrong. And they already know it's wrong. Yeah. But still, it blurts out of their mouth. I don't mean to say it this way, or I shouldn't say it this way. Don't say it. Yeah. Don't do it like that. 
Keep your pure heart. Don't let the devil have it tongue for that three words. Right. That three words can start a fire in somebody, buddy, that either you can start a fire that's a good fire or you can start a fire that's a bad fire. Yeah. That's right. It's the truth today. You can do it in people's hearts in just a little bit. But we got to watch the things we do, the things they say, because it says, that which proceed out of the mouth, come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. How many times have you said something you just wish you could reach out and oh, yeah. throw it back behind you? But buddy, when these words go out there, it's over. You know it? It's already entered into another heart, and it's already done the damage. It's true. I've had it done to me. I've done it to people. I know I have. When we do it to our loved ones, when we do it to our church family, when we do anything. But see, if we truly got God, we've got a forgiven heart. Because we understand what the Lord said, that if we don't forgive one another, He can't forgive us. That's We've right, got to man. do have this heart. Amen. We can't have, we can't go without this heart, Brother Wayne. Right. This is a heart that God's looking for. I want a heart that God's looking for. Yes. Don't you? I believe. Yes. I believe what the Word says. That one day, I believe He's going to come in the clouds. I believe He's going to receive His people in His self. That where He is, I'm going to be also. I believe all this. Amen. And I know it today, but I believe if we don't have a pure heart, Brother Wayne, we're not going to see God. Because the Bible just said, the blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. But here's the thing. I ain't just saying that for heaven. I'm saying it for here now. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We can see God here, Brother Wayne. There's people who can't see God in the situation. That's why they're so tore up, Brother Wayne. That's why they lose control. That's why they kill themselves. That's why they take their own life in their own hands. That's why they take the problems into their own hands and mess it up even more. They can't seek God. They ain't pure in heart, Brother Wayne. We're such a blessed people to have this power in us that keep that the Holy Ghost will keep us in this love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, terror. This is a power we have in our life, church. Right. we got to understand this is power that we have. This just ain't something we quote. This is something we live. This ain't about we just read. It's something we live. This is something that's dear to our heart. It's something that should be our life. Is this word right here. It ought to be our life and everything that we need. Yeah. He's a good God. He said there in 19, so Matthew 15, 18 is what I just read. It says, For but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile a man. For And then 19 says, For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts. Listen to this. This is, this is just in that little spot. In that little spot. Listen to it. Murders. Man. Murder to take somebody's life. Yeah. To lay the that you took you've made the choice for them, whether they're going to hell or going to heaven. Yeah. Listen to it. Adulteries. Adulteries. That part is to take another man's wife or a, or a, a man to take or a woman to take another man another woman's husband. You you they can't. You see what that is? Yeah. My God, that's cruel, Brother Wayne. Yeah. That is devious. Yeah. There ain't even the, adultery is the only word you can explain it with. Yeah. God give us these words. That, that's, I believe Jesus is the only way you can explain it. Because right. He's got a name that's above all names. And these words that He give us in his, his book, I believe is the only words that we can truly explain these sins. Yeah. It's just, and that should pierce the heart. I mean pierce the heart. Mm -hmm. Adulteries. Listen to that. Adulteries. Fornications. Yeah. Fornications. Listen to that. Whether it's spiritual or whether it's with the flesh, yeah. it's all evil. Yeah. It's all evil. Yes, it is. Thefts. We want to steal people's joy. We yeah. hurt. We want them to hurt. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. How many times have you been joyed over somebody's hurt? You can't lie. God knows it. How many times that we grinned when that one fell just because you knew that it was going to fall? Because the Lord revealed it to you that it was going to fall? And instead of getting down on bended knees praying the way we should have? And then afterward the way we should have? It's the truth. It's the truth. It's all right. You can say it. You're preaching to yourself tonight too. Yes, I am. Yes, I am, Wayne. I only don't get it here, though. Right. I get it in that company truck. I get it at that desk in the morning. Uh -huh. yeah. 
I get it on my knees at night. I don't just get this here. Right. We all better not just be getting this here. That's right. Amen. You better be getting it at home too. Uh -huh. Amen. You better be opening Ephesians. You better be opening Galatians. That's right. Yeah. You better be opening Philippians. That's right. You better be taking Corinthians and Thessalonians. We better be opening these up in right. Peter and James and John. Yeah. And getting this, Sister Pam, but it's the only way we're going to keep a clean heart. Right. It's the only way we're going to keep a pure heart, church, if we add this book into our life and do what's right. right. It'll make us who we need to be in God if we'll just depend on it. It'll give us that pure heart that we can stand before God, that we can come before that throne room of grace. Come before it and say, Lord. And he'll hear our prayers and he'll keep his face toward us. Yeah. I have that vision sometimes. I don't want his face turned toward me. Right, right. I don't want I want his ear, Brother Wayne, toward me. I don't want his ear turned somewhere else. I want it toward me, Brother right. Wayne. I ain't being selfish. I just want that you can have the same ear that I've got turned more toward me, toward all of you. Yeah. Uh -huh. The same ear today. Yeah. We've got to keep it. Same as in our marriage, just like I was talking the other day about hindering our prayers. It can. Husbands and wives, we must yes. do what we need to do to keep from our prayers being hindered. We can kneel down before each other and our prayer hit the sheets and never fall off the bed for what just happened an hour ago. It can, church. We've got to keep our lives straight to where we can reach God. That's the most important thing. Everything else is going to burn. That's right. Everything is going to burn if we don't take this. Do it to God. The devil tells me I ain't eloquent enough. <laughs> I don't have enough big words. That's all right. I don't care. Amen. I don't care. Amen. I, I love, I, I'm just simple. Okay? God's simple. Right. He's simple. I just know what I, I know what I hear. Amen. Amen. That's right. And I just want God, I just want us to be ready. Uh -huh. Amen. If there's a hundred here tonight, I'd want us to be ready. That's right. I want us to be ready. I want us to be on that rose call. Up yonder, I want to be there. Amen. Or here, or wherever it's called at. I don't know. It's a song. But I know that he's got a book, Wayne. Oh, yeah. And he said, my, book, my name's not found in that book. I'm going to be casted into that lake of fire with the beast and with his angels. I'm not going to be there, Brother Wayne. I ain't going to be with Jesus. I'm going to be at the devil if my name ain't there. Right. I don't want my name blotted out of that book. Yeah. See, I've got the understanding my name's there. Your name's got to be blotted out. That's right. yeah. I do. I've got that understanding. Lord, give it to me a few years ago. That my name was is there, and I don't want it blotted out. No, I don't no. want that big blot no, put no, over no. my name, Brother Wayne. No, no. I don't want him to look at that book and there's another one that I had to blot out. Because of his disobedience, because of what he's doing, the things that he's walking in, the things that he's doing, just simply denying the Son of God. Amen. That's all it takes is denying the Son of God. Yeah. That's right. He's a good God, church. We just got to keep trusting him. Go to Matthew 18. Just came Peter to him. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall I, my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven, till seven times? Listen, you know, Peter put a time on that. It may be in the Old Testament, I don't know. But most time it tells you if it is, it may be. I don't know that, that, that you're to forgive them seven times is why he said it. But here's the thing today. Peter put that, you know, there's a number put there. And it's seven times. And you know, that's seven times. It seems pretty simple. Sister Pam, you say, why, Pastor, are you, are you going to this? Well... The quickest thing can keep us from a pure heart sometimes is each other. Yeah. By not just simply forgiving one another yeah. and doing what we need to do between ourselves. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. I got heard somebody say that 420. Okay. Huh? 490. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take an account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought, one was brought with him unto him, which owed him ten talents. But much for but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and his children, and all that he had in payment to be made. All this is a parable of Jesus and what he done for his church. 
The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee. Didn't he go to the cross for us? Wasn't he the sacrifice? Didn't he stand in between what we deserve? Didn't he stand there in between what we deserve? We deserve the cross. We deserve the death, Brother Wayne, but he didn't. It says, Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him his debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he will not, and he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all thy debt, all that debt, because thou desiredest me. Shouldest not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him into the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. From the heart he asked you to forgive. The heart don't bring it up no more. I was talking today and there's an old couple on our system that I couldn't understand that he, he left his uh, wife of over 50 years. The man sat in here before. Over 50 years, he left for a, a younger girl down the holler that done drugs and this and that. This old man left for a long time. But I heard today, you know, that he went back home. She waited on him. He went back home. And, you know, glad that, you know, they, that woman that was in there talking about it, she said, she said, but I told that his wife, it was her sister, said, you cannot bring it up to his face no more. Amen. If you're going to forgive him, you said you forgive me, you can't bring it up no more. Right. That's the same with us, church. If we Amen. truly forgive from the heart, we truly forgive from the heart, that means it ain't going to come from the heart. Because when it keeps coming, I've said this before, if I tell you don't worry about that 20 and I bring that 20 up every Friday that you get paid, yeah. then it's still you owe me that 20. Yeah. Right. It's still there. It's still on the heart and it's right. still something that's bothering you. Right. It really is and it's something you truly ain't forgiven about. Am I saying it's going to be deleted? Is it going to be plumb for No, but here's the thing. You've got a power inside of you that can rebuke that thing yeah. Yeah. and quit bringing it up because that's just the devil and that's a bone you put in your closet. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay? This is a bone that's in our closets and we can't give the devil room and give him time to get it out and use it on us today. We've got to recognize that and rebuke it today because if we don't, then we'll never have true forgiveness in our hearts. That's right. Have we forgiven people? I'm just asking this to say. I'm just minding the Lord and what he's dealt with me on. Uh, we, have we got anything in our hearts that we've told the person, I forgive you? But it's still, but it's still something we bring up to them. Is it still something? Is it bother? Is it seriously? Is it? We've got to take this and put it in our heart and get this out of our hearts today. We really do. We've got to truly forgive. He said, forgive. He said, he said so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts Forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. That's everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's everyone Amen. their trespasses. we got to forgive them. We can't hold odds. We can't hold grudges. We can't, it's not godly. That's right. It's not what God's looking for, Brother Wayne. Right. I still believe that he's looking for heaven here on earth and his people. Mm -hmm. Amen. I do. Yeah, I know it says in earth. We're here on this, on this ground. I believe he's coming back. And there's, a, there's a people walking around here that's heavenly people. And people think that's so hard to do, Brother Wayne, but it ain't with the Spirit in you. That's right. It yeah. ain't. He can keep us, Brother Wayne. Guide, he man. can guide us right into it, Brother. Yeah. He can. And here's something that helps us <clears throat> to keep this. 
Jesus was asked the greatest of the commandments. He said, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Church members and church people is going to hell just over this simple stuff that I've told you here tonight. Amen. And it's right in the body. Pride. It's the truth. It's yeah. right in it. Yeah. It's, it's going along, and, 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 it, and it is. And it's got to stop. In each individual's mind and heart, it's got to stop. Mm-hmm. In mine, my kid, everybody, it's got to stop. It's got to. It's got to stop. Listen, it's Proverbs 21 more. It says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. Did you hear that? The king's heart is in the, listen, where's it at? It's in the hand of the Lord. And as his rivers of water, what's the Lord do? He turneth it wheresoever he will. Listen to this. It says, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the heart. It's the Lord that ponders his heart. He is. It's the Lord that's looking at these things. Listen, we can have a good life in God and, and trust Him and depend on Him, or we can have a rough life. We really can. You think it's been a rough life. Much crime as we do, this and that, but it's not a cry that, not like that. It's a cry, there's, there's cries of joy, there's cries of peace, there's cries of just loving God and all this, and then there's cries that we're mourning for others. Yeah. And I've been mourning for others. I want to see people saved. Yeah. I got a boy out there. I just found out. He, I guess he's smoking pot. Something I have sat down so many times. Yeah. And said, Danny, that just leads to something bigger. Yeah. Why? Why won't you listen? Why won't you listen? Well, they won't. They just, they just, they got to touch it, Pam. <laughs> they get around and they get, a, they just get around people and it's just, you can handle it. Can't handle it. It's like I was speaking out Sunday there. People get sin and they think they can handle sin. They can't handle sin. No. No. no the devil gets in it, buddy. I'm telling you, tires their lives apart before they know it. They're just. I, I pay attention. I know. You know how many adults are riding around with their grandmas? Yeah. Riding around with their moms? Riding around with their dads? Aunts and uncles? Because of a simple. Simple little snorters that started with, and now they ain't even got enough mind to take care of their families. That's right. Yeah. That's what we're dealing with. That's right. Yeah. This is the hearts that we're dealing with, buddy. And just by God, we ought to be grateful to see. Amen. 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 You didn't go on in it, Donna. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Pam, it got you out there. Yes. Thank you, Lord. It brought me out. Why don't you just didn't keep going in it? Thank you, God. We're so blessed. Amen. He's merciful. Thank you, Lord. We're so blessed we are. that we got to do that them ears wasn't bummed on. That we could be touched somehow by God. Amen. We can do it. But we got to keep a pure heart, Brother Wayne. That's right, amen. We got to keep a pure heart. We got to keep it. Kids, watch your parents, please. Watch them. Parents, let's keep in mind they're watching. That's right. <laughs> when I pray for you, baby, I say, Lord, let me be an example for them. Amen. That's right. That they need to see God. Yes. I want to be an example for them. I'm about to pray for myself too, Brother Wayne. That's right. Because I don't mess up in front of them. But when they see me mess up, I want them to see them to be get up. That's right. Amen. That's all. That's what That's I right. want to know that they can get up. That's right. When they mess up, I really do. I want to be an example to them that they can come to and and take it and have confidence in that they can get help, Brother Wayne. Amen. Try. It is. Kids need their parents. They get they're getting too big now. They they don't think they need you no more. They get to where they don't need nothing. You know, it just thrills my heart. I don't care if it's to ask a question about a washer. I, I like to hear him call me. You know, just yeah. Try. You know, you, it ain't aggravating <laughs> because you just say, I can help him. You know, Amen. I can help him. Yeah. You know, and you. Just try to get reach their heart somehow. Try to get them to do the right thing. 
do his thing. But we need to keep a pure heart. <laughs> it's time that we're living in. He's a good God, church. Amen. We need to pray for one another now more than ever. Thank Amen. That's right. Amen. We're in a battle. And man, it ain't looking It ain't looking like it's going to get no better. I believe yeah. the time in the book where he said it's going to wax worse and worse is here. I, I, I do too. I was listening to a preacher the other day. And he was talking about, he had this, you know, he's a preacher over 8,000 people in New York Times Square. That's a bad place. Yes, it is. And he started, he said the Lord led him out of starting a church. To start a church, start the Lord a church. And I, I, I've, I've researched and I've looked and I still can't find nothing wrong with this man. And I, you know, you always, when there's, when there's lots of people like that, yes, now you can't say that all the crowd's doing what he's preaching. Yeah. But buddy, he's, he's, he's giving the stuff. And he's right there in New York, Times Square. He got one of the old theaters. Lord took him to where he's going and everything. Now he's over 8,000 people there in that place. And he's talking about where they, he said that they, he's uh, talking to these the younger preachers and this and that that do stocks and bonds and this and that. And he's uh, telling them, prophesying to them. And they told him, said, we've never seen it. He said, it'll go. I said, when, he, when the stocks went down, they looked at him and said, they'll go back up. They always have. He said, that's what he said for the past, they told him past 10 years, we've lived in prosperity. We've lived in this. Said, this is all we know, and that's the way it's going. He said, it's always going to go back up. We don't have to wane. It ain't going back up. No. Drop 700 points. Dude. It's dropping, and it's dropped. This man, he said, I prophesied to him that it was going to drop that it was going to drop. He said, and three weeks later, it dropped 300 points. He said, and then my phone rung off the hook. Yeah. Then, he said, I've wrote books on it. He said, then the places is calling me saying, I need more of your books. They're coming and buying them because now they're seeing that your prophecy was right. Mm -hmm. He said, and he said, all I'm doing is, and you know what this man claims to be? He claims just to be a watchman. He said, the Lord, I'm a watchman for the Lord. He said, and when I hear the trumpet sound, he said, I'm Letting the trumpet go. He said, I'm just carrying the trumpet on out. He said, he's letting me hear it, and I'm carrying it on out. Amen. But there's Amen. people, listen, there's people out there still true with God, Brother Wayne. Still, still true with still God. True. And they're doing what God asked them to do, Brother Wayne. Amen. And man, we're living in a bad time. Yes. We really are. Yes. That the wealth, that ain't gonna, it ain't going to hold you no more. No. The money ain't going to keep you no more. No. There's going to be a day you got a headache, the town all won't be in there. Right. It's the truth, Brother Wayne. Man, it won't be right. in that cabinet. Amen. It won't be. Right. Love me. He's a good God. I'm glad and I'm thankful to be free from caffeine standing here before you. I am. I was thinking about that today. I said, well, there's so many still drinking it and depending on it and this and that, but I'm not ashamed to stand here just like I am with cigarettes. I'm not ashamed to stand here and say that I'm glad to be free from it. It was a bondage in my life. It was a burden in my life, and I'm glad to be free from it. I'm glad that if something does happen like that, Brother Wayne, I ain't got to fight for a headache over it. Yeah. I ain't got to fight with a headache over it. Now I'm wanting to conquer food. Yeah. I want to say, okay, Paul, I'm hungry, but I'm going with you. Yeah. Okay, Paul, I'm naked, but I'm going with you. Yeah. Okay, Paul, I just thank God everything I had the last month, but I'm going with you. Right. I just want to, I want to be... It's content, content, brother Wayne. Yes. Content, not get puffed up over a candy bar. Right. Seriously. Not one, you know, because you get in the habit of these things. Yes. Your body wants it. Your flesh wants it. Yes. We need to come, not have nothing under control of us, but the Spirit of God. Amen. That's what we need to do, brother Wayne, and get things back to where it needs to be with God. It really is today. If we notice it's got us under control, we need to work on that thing. Amen. We need to get to where the Spirit's under under control of this body to where we don't have to depend on these things, Sister Pam. We really do. We need to depend on the Lord. We need to depend on the Lord because one day it's a coming. It really is. It's a coming. Yep. I believe it's going to wax worse and worse. I don't know. Some people say three and a half years. Some people say the whole seven years. Some people, I don't know what all we're going to go through. But we better be ready. We better be ready. Because right. it's coming. Kind of, you know, here's the thing. How much has already went on? Yeah. I got buddy, I got brothers and sisters over getting beheaded for the name of Christ right now. Yeah. They are. Right yeah. now. That's right. They're being beheaded. They are. How do I know this stuff ain't already coming and we're just living in a land right now in a, in a place right now to where it's just not here yet? It's 
coming. You know what I mean? It's just a thing. Or, or, or praise God, he put us somewhere where we wouldn't be like that. Right. I, don't, I don't know. I thank him. Either way, I thank him. Amen. But we've got to be prepared to go all the way. He yeah. said, who, who is it that's going to go? It's he that endureth to the end. The same shall be saved. Yeah. And we got to endure to the end, whether it's to a, whether it's to a chopping block or whether it's to the grave. That's right. Either way, we've got to endure to the end today. But they don't take no less power just because we went by the grave than it did the chopping block. Right. We're still going to be before God. Amen. We really are. He's a good God, church. That's all I got for you. I love the Lord. And I thank you for what He's doing. He's everything.